Hey guys, welcome to Health Talks with Bukamusom Timkulu. So yes, the lungs, most majestic type of organs in the body, or all of them are majestic because they all have cool ass functions. But the one function that I love most about the lungs is the fact that they let you, they help in keeping you alive. And we do that by breathing in air that is rich in oxygen so that our body can take up that oxygen and use it to stay alive and stay viable and so forth. But there are situations where that function is decreased and it may be um, in general population where we don't breathe efficiently so we don't get much, much oxygen in general or in other conditions such as asthma or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease where your lungs are damaged and they cannot physically um, take up as much oxygen as the general population. But there's always good news, I think, when it comes to talks with me, is because there are ways that you can try and increase your lung function as a healthy individual or as a person with a chronic illness. And it, breathing in oxygen, getting oxygen into the body is very important. And so I'm going to tell you what those are today and give you a few tips and um, a few basic exercises that you can do in to help you increase your lung function so the main aim with this is to increase the amount of air that you can breathe into your lungs as well as the as well as the amount of air that you do breathe out so that you can have more space to breathe in more air right so the first thing you want to do is breathing exercises followed by strengthening muscles that assist in breathing and lastly challenging yourself doing activities of daily living or endurance types of, acti types of activities without struggling to breathe and using your air more efficiently so that you can do better. Okay guys, let's look into this video, look more into those three factors and yeah. There are many muscles that help with breathing, but the main muscle is your diaphragm. So your diaphragm is like this dome-shaped muscle that attaches at the bottom of your rib cage or the bottom of your chest where your where the bone ends and it goes across in that plane. And it separates your tummy and the organs in there to your um, organs that are situated inside the actual chest. Now, when we breathe, we don't always use our diaphragm to help us breathe. We generally just use our neck muscles to help us breathe. And what you'll see is that it'll be more of a shallow type of breath. Sort of like you are just taking snippets of air. I mean, you have this whole world around you. You're just taking little pieces and pieces and pieces of air instead of getting as much as you can at once. What we are meant to do is get as much as we can at once to take in as much air as possible, let the diaphragm expand like an elastic band and then recoil back and expel all that air out. And how do we get that to happen? How do we use our diaphragm effectively in breathing? It's this thing known as diaphragmatic breathing. And what you'll have here is you'll take in a lot of deep breaths and you will take long and slow exhales of your breaths so that um, you can use your diaphragm more effectively and get in as much air as possible. And how you would start is that you would have one hand on your chest and one hand on your tummy. You can do it uh, preferably sitting down or lying down. I do like to do it lying down but I will show both. So, with your one arm hand on your chest, that hand should not move when you're breathing. 
The hand on your tummy should move up when you take a breath in and go back down when you exhale, exhale that air. So slowly take a deep breath in, let your tummy expand, grow nice and big and then slowly exhale all that air and let your tummy flatten again. So you want to consciously do this keeping your chest still as possible or as much as possible and getting your tummy up and getting your tummy back down and generally starting with like five seconds breathing in and then six seconds breathing out is good but if you cannot then start with maybe two seconds breathing in and then two seconds breathing out Next is your core muscles. These are your abs, as most people know it, or your tummy muscles. And it goes from just below your ribcage, so where your diaphragm starts, all the way towards your hip regions, which is your pelvic, your, the floor of your um, tummy area, to say. And what you want in that is to have it strong and stable. Your core is very important in transferring forces from your lower body to your upper body and vice versa. So for example, when you want to walk or when you want to get up and then grab something, that force needs to go from your lower body, trans or be carried through your, your core, which is nice and stable, and then go all the way up to your hand. When you're walking, you want to make sure that you're transferring from leg to, to well, one leg to opposite arm, etc. throughout. But if your core is not strong, then you're not transferring the, the force that well, which means that you're using way more energy to do simple tasks than what you should. And so core is very important. The other thing that core helps with is expelling all that air from your lungs when you do breathe out. It helps in pushing the diaphragm back up in, in a way. So, how can we strengthen our core? How can we make sure that it's stable? When you are using your core, you should also be breathing. And so the importance in strengthening the core is to get that air out, but also to breathe while you do activities and to breathe effectively like we have done in diaphragmatic breathing. So firstly, I want you to lie on your back. And when you're lying on your back, you'll have your legs bent and your feet flat on the floor, your arms at your side. Then you will take one finger or two of either hand and you will find your one hip. Once you've found it, you'll move a few fingers in and about one finger down. And then you'll give me a nice big cough. And what you should feel is this bulge of a muscle come through. This muscle is known as transversus abdominis or TA. Your TA is your, your stabilizing muscle of your core and should be active um, most of the time. But it is one of the muscles that is hard to train because it's a small or small muscle, it's not a mover muscle, it's a stability muscle. And we move easily, but we don't stabilize well, which can lead to injuries and so forth. Now that you have found this muscle, I want you to sort of cough and sort of um, decrease that 100% contraction that you have and try and get it to about 50%. When you do this, you'll notice that you have probably stopped breathing, which is not good. So you need to keep it at 50% activation whilst breathing. So stay in that 50% activation and take a nice deep breath in, maybe for about three breaths in and three breaths out. Sort of how you did with diaphragmatic breathing, but now you're focusing on keeping that muscle activated throughout. Once this gets easier for you, you are now consciously using your core and you can start doing other exercises that help with breathing out. A nice exercise to help with breathing as well is a normal crunch. So you'll still be on your back with your arms either on your thighs 
or behind your head but you don't want to use your neck when you're moving forward so I prefer that you put them on your thighs and what you'll do when they're here is you'll take a deep breath in as you breathe out you will slide your hands up towards your knees so that your fingers just touch the top of your knees and then breathe in and then slide all the way back down when you're breathing out so you'll breathe in then breathe out slide up stop breathe in breathe out slide down so you want to make sure that you're breathing throughout the activity all right Now you can do this. You can use your core to help you breathe. You can use your diaphragm to help you breathe effic efficiently. Now you've got to challenge yourself. Doing activities of daily living is a nice way to challenge yourself. The first thing, for example, if you're sitting at your desk or on the couch, consciously think of how you're breathing when you're standing up and walking to get something. So if, for example, if you were sitting in a chair, what you would do is you would breathe in as you stand up you would breathe out and then continue breathing in and out nice taking deep breaths while you're busy walking and as you're doing activities you'll start to see that you start to breathe more uh, better or well, better without having to think about how you're breathing then you can challenge yourself a bit more start including exercise into your activities of daily living but when I say exercise I mean endurance types endurance type of exercise mainly 30 minutes of endurance activity five days a week but obviously start slow maybe start with 10 minutes of walking at a nice brisk pace or 10 minutes of swimming or 10 minutes of jogging or cycling or whatever and then as you see that you're breathing more efficiently and getting uh, fitter then increase the amount of time that you're doing that activity for. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this video does help in getting you to start uh, paying more attention to how you are breathing. But if you have never exercised before, if you do have a chronic condition, especially asthma or COPD, please do get medical clearance first and uh, start with a professional such as a biokineticist or so forth to help you get to that level of independence where you don't need help with exercise with breathing with exercising and breathing so start slow get help it is okay to get help but also if you are working with someone don't forget to speak up for yourself if you are tired tell them take a break it is good to push yourself, but it's not good to push yourself to the point where you are blue in the face. So have a voice for yourself, speak up for what you want to do, and take control of your health. No one is meant to do it for you. I hope you guys do have a great week, and I will see you very, very